You're watching News Channel 8. I'm Bruce DePoy. Coming up, we are loving this beautiful stretch of spring weather, but turns out there's a downside. Allergy season is starting much earlier than normal. Some people have already been feeling it. What can you do if Mother Nature has you in misery? We'll get some advice from one of the region's leading allergists, Dr. Talal in Suli. Then from News Channel 8, this is News Talk with Bruce DePoint. Hi, everybody. Welcome in on this beautiful Wednesday here in the nation's capital. It is so great to have you with us today. This winter was one of the mildest ever. We got virtually no snow and it never really got cold. Now spring is here. This week's temperatures much more like June than early March. But turns out there's a downside to all this pleasant weather. Allergy season is kicking in with gusto. Fortunately, we've got someone here who can offer some advice. Dr. Talal Insuli is with the Watergate Allergy and Asthma Center, routinely recognized as one of the region's best. It is good to see you again. Thank good you to very see much Bruce. for your time. Thank you very much. The timing is great because we're way ahead in terms of the calendar, are we not? Absolutely, yes. We have been having significant uh, uh, high polling count, patients coming to see us early during the season with itchy eyes, watery eyes, significant allergy symptoms. We, we didn't have practically, we didn't have a winter, and this has been really causing the pollination to, to occur. The polling count started about maybe four to five weeks ago. Uh, trees are, are really uh, very active. Uh, so the question, how this is happening, what, what really controls the, the, the seasons in terms of the pollen, at least mm -hmm. in my specialty. So I think it's, it's very important to, to know that we do have have a, a heat factor that, that occurs and we know that we do have the uh, the sun that produces a certain uh, energy heat that gets to to earth and this uh, heat uh, solar energy is absorbed by earth a certain portion of it will be reflected back to go into space however due to to the uh, uh, greenhouse gas we do have a reabsorption mm. that re reflect on earth and then we have an increase in temperature so the question what increase in temperature has to do with the pollen and with the allergies uh, studies have been shown that increase in temperature uh, cause the pollination to occur cause the flowering the flowering to occur earlier mm -hmm. so early pollination early flowering due to the high temperature. All of my neighbor's trees, the dogwoods and the, the, the real, you know, the ones with the big flowers that you really notice, it's like it's, like it's April already. How, how far ahead are we? Are we four weeks ahead, we, six? We are about probably five to six weeks ahead. Wow. And By the way, we, we uh, see. Uh, 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 I, I hold that thought for a moment because sure. part of having you with us is to get the phone lines open and sure. to get people communicating with you about what it is they're going through right now. So <clears throat> if you're, it sounds like I've got allergies. I <laughs> actually don't. You can't come and see. <laughs> if you're watching us live in the 10 a.m. hour and you have an allergy question for Dr. Talal Ansuli, join us now. Grab an open line. Our number is on your screen, 703-387-1020. Please don't wait to the end of our conversation. Sometimes calls get jammed up at the end. We can take you now if you call now, 703 Three three eight seven ten twenty is the number here on News Talk. We'll go to the phones as your questions and comments come in. You were getting ready sure. to say. So it's a, a very fascinating phenomenon that we see. So first of all, we have increase in the temperature, and we all know it because we didn't really have a, a, a winter. This, it was in the eighties. It was in the eighties. Eighties. I mean, unbelievable. And this increase in the temperature, as I showed in here, that we have early pollination and early flowering. So the pollen start to get out very early, and we saw it. Uh, in one hand, another hand, we do have also the combustion that can increase. CO2 and greenhouse gas in the air and studies have been shown scientific studies have been shown that CO2 increases the productivity of the pollen and the CO2 also increases the allergenicity of the pollen which is something very interesting really so not only that we have the an increase allergenicity allergenicity so I'm going to tell you why and uh, what it is so it increases the production so we have a higher degree of pollen that's produced due to the CO2 and also we do have the the quality, qualitatively, the pollen is more aggressive. So it's uh, mm. uh, the, the differentiation of the pollen gets improved with the CO2, and then they get to the allergy receptors, they stimulate the cascade of allergies, and we get more allergic reaction. So it's a, a more prepared pollen to trigger allergic reaction and to cause wheezing, cough, difficulty breathing. Uh, keeping in mind also we have an increase in ozone uh, in the air due again to the combustion, and ozone by itself 
cause stuffy nose, runny nose, itchy eyes, and asthma as well. We have to remember that asthma is an allergic disease of the lungs. And we just published a paper. I just came back last week from uh, the American Academy of Allergy in Orlando. I presented a paper showing the complete link between allergies and asthma. And we know that uh, through our study that 76% of patients that do suffer from asthma, their asthma is caused by allergies. What has been allergies drive the asthma is a driven uh, disease by pollen, dust, and, and other things. I want to ask you in a moment, what do you do when people come to you? But to take a step back for a moment, do you worry about climate change long term? Are, are we going to see things down the road that, 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 are, that are different from a medical perspective than the, than the recent past? I think the answer is, is, uh, is yes. Uh, of course, I am always an open-minded person, but we see some, some real numbers. We see this uh, very uh, the, the climate changes in terms of temperature. I mean, we didn't have, uh, practically, we didn't have a winter this year. And we're seeing, I mean, we're starting a very early uh, season in terms of the pollen, very uh, early season in terms of the spring. So I think this will impact, no question about it, in terms of the temperature, in terms of also affecting the way that the pollen the way that the trees and grasses will be behaving. When we are talking about allergenicity, we are talking about something specific. It means that the, the grain of the pollen would be more sophisticated to trigger an allergic reaction. So therefore, we are talking about what? We are talking about starting an early season, uh, having a late season to finish, number two. Number three, we have an increase in pollen due to that. And number three, the pollen is more aggressive. Here we go. So we have a, the, the perfect storm to have allergies. Talk about what hits when. When do we get trees? When do we get pollen? Uh, I mean, uh, when do we get trees? When do we get grass? When do we, you know, uh, are there stages right. that you usually, see? Usually, absolutely. We usually we see them, the, the trees usually they bloom during the, the, the spring season. Then during the summer, we start to talk about the grasses that do cover that. And then August the 15th, we start with the ragweed. And ragweed is a very allergenic uh, type of, uh, very, very aggressive pollen. Why? Because the ragweed is the lightest pollen in weight. As soon as we get some wind, the pollen of the ragwood gets up in the air, being very light, gets up in the air, in the nose, in the eyes, and cause severe allergic reaction. And that's what people notice during the ragwood season, during the month of August. They have to be very careful about it. All right. We have a caller, and I have no idea the caller's name or what line they're on or any of that information, but I'm going to have faith that we can just go forward and say hello to the caller. Go right ahead, please. You're on the air. Hi. Hi. Welcome. Uh, my name is Renee, and I just wanted to ask him a question because I've been having problems with my nose, been congested since January. So you've been dealing with symptoms for a while. Yeah. Uh, uh, stay on the line because Dr. Insuli might have a question for you. Sure. What do you do when uh, people call in? It, mm -hmm. And it's not like, oh, since yesterday or last week. Uh, you say January. January. January, interestingly. So you, during the winter, what happens? We allergists, we are quite busy the whole year round, including in the winter, although we don't have any pollen, but we do have what? Dust mite. So dust mite with the heating system that we are using, and this uh, causes a significant increase in dust. So probably our viewer is is a person who could be suffering from dust mite allergy and this uh, should need, uh, she needs to have an evaluation to see an allergist and to see whether or not she's allergic to dust. But do you think that's a possibility, Renee? Is it, could it be the dust mites? Oh, I don't know, but you know what? I have been to the doctor, I had a CT scan, I had everything. Hmm. And um, it? They, it came back um, negative and they was just saying it was a lot of um, Falling up in my something about egg, something pollution in the nose or something that had okay. me so congested. Good. Okay, so I mean that's what I was going to say, that, that she should have a CAT scan. A CT scan is a picture of the sinuses to see if we have any infection in the sinuses because we all know that the sinuses, uh, the, the nose is connected uh, with, the, with the sinuses. This is the normal nose and this is the allergic nose. So when we have allergies, we have swelling of the lining, we have mucus secretion and this... Uh, oh, so it's this the yuck side and this the clear side? That is correct. So this is the allergic side yuck and being this is the a, clear the, side. the technical medical term, You're obviously. Right, absolutely. So the, the, these are the, the, the individual individuals that are suffering from allergies, we see congestion, we see mucus secretion, post nasal dripping that bothers tremendously a great deal of people, and, and this is very important to know. Now we have to keep in mind that our nasal cavity is connected with what is connected with the sinuses, and it's connected with the ears as well. So we have an opening in here that goes to the ears, an opening in here that goes to the sinuses. And I'm going to show you, when we look at the other side, we see that the sinuses are in here. So therefore, if we do have nasal congestion on a regular basis, this congestion can become 
a complication and result in a sinus infection. Why? Because the opening, the windows of sinus will get blocked. Then we start to accumulate fluid in the sinuses and we get uh, chronic congestion, headaches, stuffy nose. Now, she had, our viewer had already a CT scan. The CT scan was negative. Therefore, there is no infection. She doesn't have to take an antibiotic, but she has to take anti-allergy medication. The wonderful nasal anti-inflammatory agent, the nasal sprays that are on prescription, extremely effective, and using an antihistamine, a non-sedating one could be also very effective Renee, uh, as well. I'm sorry, Renee, thank you very much for the call. We'll go back to the phones momentarily, so if you're on, hold now, remain there, and I will take your call. When someone comes in, how do you begin the process? It's a little bit of a mystery, I would guess. Sort Absolutely. Of a scavenger, not a scavenger hunt, that's terrible, but uh, I mean, uh, there's a kind of mystery quality. You're right. People come in. Absolutely. This, how, what type of symptoms, how long they've had them, and then that's when you begin your process, obviously. Exactly. So we, the most important uh, part of our visit in our allergy clinic is taking a careful history, listening to the patient, and knowing exactly what type of symptoms, when these symptoms are occurring. Is it every time the patient goes to the barn, gets some type of symptoms, maybe the patient's allergic to the horse. Mm -hmm. And uh, uh, when they go home and they have some symptoms, and the patient was having major symptoms and having a couple of emergency room visits per month, this about six months ago, and no one knew, they thought it's an infection, it was to do with antibiotics, and we did an allergy testing, and we found out that he was extremely allergic to cat. He had three cats at home. Oh boy. So he was able to- New cats? Send no, no, these cats were there, but slowly, slowly he became allergic to. So we, we can become uh, sensitized. So it's important to know that you can have something at home that we have been exposed for a while. And slowly, slowly this exposure will wow. sensitize, will make us allergic to, and then uh, the person became allergic to. So we told him to avoid exposure to the cats. The cats were sleeping in the bedroom. And, and he sent the two cats to his mom, another cat to his sister. And now he's doing much better. And so the first step, Number one, to find out to what allergic, we're allergic to. Number two, to avoid the allergen. And then we have the excellent treatment medications. And number four, we do have the allergy injections. Allergy injections are extremely effective, much more effective than the old ones. And I think this is something that has not been really discussed. Why? Because we have maybe a couple of companies in the United States that produce the allergens, and people have to know that. You know, I don't think you and I have ever talked about peanut allergies, but if time permitting, sure. uh, uh, we're going we're gonna to do that. Oh, I do want to go back to the phones, though. Anjan in Alexandria, it's your turn with Dr. Insuli. Thank you for calling in and go right ahead. Hi, how are you doing? Good. Uh, I've been taking uh, allergy medication. It's a Zyrtec about two weeks ago. I took it for a week and then I went to talk to the pharmacist and she told me to take a Claritin D because of the congestion. Uh, so for like five days, I've been taking that Claritin D. And I also bought a nasal spray so that I could feel better. But even at night, like I have a runny nose, stuffy nose, and then I can't go to sleep. Mm -hmm. And uh, I, it's not getting uh, better. So I was wondering, like, what can I do in order to uh, get myself better? Absolutely. We, you can hear, you can hear the, the quality of life issues Excellent. at play here. Oh, of course. Excellent question. And this brings us immediately to the question about what do we do when we are dealing with over-the-counter medications? What you are doing when you are self-medicating? We have some good over-the-counter medications, but these medications are not enough for us to get to improve. Therefore, as we mentioned, when we go to an allergist, the allergist finds out to what we're allergic to, will tell us how to avoid the uh, factor that's causing the allergic reactions, mm -hmm. and then we start on the appropriate treatment. Now, using only an antihistamine does not really always resolve the problem. So it's not as simple like that. So, and, and our viewer, uh, she took the uh, antihistamine, she didn't get better, and then she went up now to desertic D, with the deco uh, clarity in D, I think, mm -hmm. with the decongestant. And I don't like decongestants long-term because de decongestants long-term can cause hypertension, palpitation, tremors, insomnia, anxiety, and uh, mood changes. So no one likes to have these things. So we have to be very, especially if we have high blood pressure. Uh, so therefore, we have a lot of side effects that can occur from that. So what do we do? Very important to be able to access at that time to see the allergist, to see the specialist in order to have the evaluation and to provide the appropriate treatment. One of the most effective treatments that we have for nasal allergy, hay fever, is to treat the na nasal cavity with nasal topical anti-allergic uh, agents that are nasal sprays, that are prescription. And these are nasal topical anti-inflammatory agents. They block the mucus, they block the swelling of the lining, and they uh, provide significant improvement. Relief. The, the relief, and uh, they fix the uh, patency as well. So again, 
over-the-counter treatment, it's okay if we do well at the first time. And if we are not doing well, then we'll have to be careful and we'll have to really see the allergist to find out what we are treating and not to shoot in the dark. We are going to hold Dr. Insuli over. So we're Continuing our conversation now here on News Talk with Dr. Talal Insuli. He's one of the region's top-ranked allergists. He works at the Watergate Allergy and Asthma Center. And we don't want to decouple the asthma for the reasons that you were describing in the earlier segment. If you have a question or comment, and we were talking at the outset, about how early and how intensely allergy season has hit here in the Washington area. So if you're suffering, if someone in your family is suffering, or if you have an, a, just a general allergy or asthma question, call the number on your screen, 703-387-1020. We're holding Dr. Insuli over, uh, and thank you for your time, sure. in order for us to take more of your calls. So don't hold back if you have a question. Uh, call the line on your screen now, grab an open line, we'll go to the phones and your calls as our questions, uh, as our Q&A period continues. Um, are you able to offer relief to the to are, are is the is the allergy are, are allergy specialists able to offer relief to the to the majority of people who come through the door? The quick answer is absolutely yes. We can provide them major relief. We can improve their symptoms. We can take care of their asthma, their wheezing, their cough, difficult breathing, shortness of breath, the eye symptoms, itchy eyes, watery eyes, the nasal congestion, uh, even snoring at night has been associated with allergies. All of all of the of the above collectively, when we see the specialists, the allergist, immunologists specialized in treating allergies, we uh, certainly not only improve the symptoms and will make them go, will improve the quality of life of these patients. And many studies were were done, many studies were published showing the difference between the uh, specialist and the non-specialist as well. And that's what we do all the time. Uh, we are dedicated to improve the nose, the eyes, and the chest of our patients. Very important to keep in mind that asthma affecting the lungs is an allergic disease of the lungs. So uh, many people think that asthma is re related to stress or related to any type of uh, pollution, and things, but uh, asthma is really allergic. And we notice in here, we see the difference between the normal air tubes and the asthmatic air tubes, and we see that there is a significant difference sure. in terms of, uh, we have constriction of the uh, muscles around the air tubes, swelling of the lining and mucus. Now, very um, interesting, uh, within the uh, years of studies, uh, has been shown that the swelling of the lining, if it is not treated, so some people say, no, I'm not gonna worry about my cough, I'm gonna take a cup of coffee, I'm gonna get cough medication, I'm gonna take antibiotic, we're not doing anything. We are only putting a patch on a wound. We are only camouflaging a problem. We don't want to camouflage, we're going to fix it. Why? Because if we don't fix this inflammation, studies show that long-term inflammation can lead to irreversible lung damage. Yeah. And this can result in uh, fixed uh, airway obstruction called airway remodeling. What does it mean? That in the future, one cannot breathe uh, the right way and one cannot uh, fix that. In order to do it, the person has to avoid the offending, uh, the, the offending culprit, to be evaluated by the allergist, and also to treat the appropriate inhaled anti-inflammatory agents that we do have. Now, we never had a machine that was able to calculate the uh, degree of inflammation. We had machines that would blow a machine, like a peak flow, and would let us know how how many liters per air we are blowing to see the patency, to see how patent is the conduit. And now what we have, there is a new machine, a, a new machine called the nitric oxide analyzer that analyzes the inflammation, analyzes the fumes that we exhale. So if I have asthma and I'm exhaling out, there's a machine now detect the nitric oxide and will let us know how inflamed are my air tubes. And the inflammation is important because the inflammation can lead to scarring, can lead to irreversible lung damage. And certainly we don't want this to happen. Therefore, by using the nitric oxide machine, this will allow us to uh, gauge the treatment, go up on the treatment, decrease the treatment, and uh, improve significantly the outcome of asthma. So the symptoms are what we notice. It's the symptoms, that difficulty breathing and that feeling of stuffiness, and, and in, in many cases, worse symptoms than that. That's what we notice. But it's not to be thought of strictly in the context of uh, like short-term quality of life. B for the reasons you outline, the potential <clears throat> probably a minority of cases, at least I'm hoping, mm. that you'll do damage. Symptoms left untreated, symptoms that go on Correct. a long period of time, you can damage the body, and that's obviously not good. Absolutely right. I mean, in terms of the lungs, this has been certainly proven. And, and more so, 
uh, we, we, uh, we, we, we did other studies also recently and we showed that uh, allergies can have an impact on fatigue. What, so what does it mean? It means if we have significant allergies and these allergies are not well controlled, patients can feel lethargic and tired and then this can affect their family, quality of family life, their professional life, they cannot really, uh, their productivity, so it's a big, big problem. One has to be aware about it and see the allergist in order to be evaluated. I promise we'd go right back to the phones as, uh, as calls come in. Cecilia in Silver Spring is next. Your turn. Uh, Mom, you're on the air. Go right ahead, please. Hello? Hi. Welcome. Hi. Go ahead, Cecilia. Yes. I have a 10-month-old baby, and I've been taking her to the doctor for the last five, six months with runny nose. And they check her lungs, the ear. She doesn't have any uh, ear infection. Her lung sounds good. But she still has the runny nose. And I don't know what to do. I sure. mean, they don't find her with anything. So could it be allergies, maybe? Stay on the line, Cecilia. Uh, it's a very interesting question. At 10 months old, Cecilia is uh, uh, giving us a nice history in here, and uh, the baby is having uh, some runny nose on, on a regular basis, and uh, they checked uh, the lungs, they checked the ears, everything is fine, but the nose is not fine, so there's some, some problem going on. Uh, so uh, important to know that also if the nose is not uh, patent, if we have nasal congestion on a regular basis, one can in the future develop asthma. So it's another also problem that one has to keep uh, um, uh, an eye on it. However, coming back to the question for Cecilia, so what could be causing that? In infants and in children that are below two or three years of age, often the allergen is not environmental. The allergen, the culprit is food allergy. Mm. Could be milk, could be peanut, could be wheat, could be egg allergy. Now we get the answer, no, I don't have any problem with that. I'm breastfeeding my, my baby. However, what the mom is eating is getting in the breast milk, expressing the breast milk, getting to the baby. So it's very important, I think I will advise Cecilia to have her baby taken to a uh, pediatric allergist, immunologist, who will do the appropriate testing, will find out what type of allergy is causing that, and cutting down on the specific food, uh, she will be doing much better. And get some relief. Cecilia, good luck to you. Thank you very much for calling in and sharing your uh, story. Good luck to you and your 10-month-old. <coughs> we got to wrap up, but real sure. quick, I am curious, and I promised we would ask about peanut allergies. Growing up, none of us knew anybody, or there was maybe Correct. one kid who had the peanut allergy. Now, it's pretty common. And some, t some airlines have said no more peanuts on the plane. We don't want mm -hmm. that peanut essence, if you will, layman's term, right. getting into the, circula the air system of the plane. What's going on, just briefly? Sure. So the, the peanut allergy has been uh, now um, increasing in terms of incidence and has been causing uh, some death in, in some cases. Uh, we, I think that we are becoming more allergic. Our, our allergy system is becoming more sensitive uh, to peanut. The way that the peanut is prepared as well, roasting the peanut uh, has been maybe opening some of these uh, areas of the molecule making them more allergic mm -hmm. and increasing that. In the same time, we are better diagnosticians now. We have more and more allergies gotcha. that really finding out what could be going on. Uh, the treatment of peanut allergy, please avoid it. Some studies are done in terms of peanut desensitization with some type of uh, uh, drops under the tongue, but this uh, is certainly we are at the infancy of these studies and we have to wait. But the future hopefully would provide us with some type of treatment. For the treatment right now, avoid peanut completely. If you're allergic to peanut, have your EpiPen ready, which is the uh, epinephrine injector right. in case of severe reaction. As Dr. Insuli mentioned, this is a 20, uh, this is a 12 month a year phenomenon for a lot of people or for certain people. So, uh, but any season of the year, it's good to have you with us. Thank you very, Thank very you. much for answering the questions and sharing your expertise with us. Dr. Talal Insuli. Thank you, Bruce. We'll take a break. We'll talk with DC Council candidates.